All right, so today let's talk about how to draw a cyclohexane chair. Uh, one of the easiest ways to draw a cyclohexane chair that I've found is something I call the parallelogram method. Uh, now, of course, when you go into an organic chemistry course for the first time, you've never drawn a cyclohexane chair before, but you've probably drawn a, cycle, uh, drawn a parallelogram. And a parallelogram is really at the core of a cyclohexane chair. If you look at these four little dots that I circle here, each of these four dots is going to be one of the carbons that's going to be a part of our cyclohexane chair structure. All right. So if you start off by drawing the, the parallelogram, it's usually a good place to start. So once you've drawn the parallelogram, the next thing to do is you want to draw a flap coming down like that. And you notice that here we've got this kind of nice concave angle between our parallelogram and the flap. Well, you, uh, you definitely want to have uh, a measurable angle between the flap and the parallelogram. And the same thing for uh, the upper flap. You also want to have a nice concave angle on the inside right there as well. All right. So you can see that just by drawing the parallelogram and these two triangles, so the, the, the two flaps, we've already drawn the outline of our cyclohexane chair. So once you've done that, then what I like to do is just erase these guidelines on the parallelogram so we're just left with the, the structure itself. And now what we're going to do is identify in our cyclohexane chair diagram what the headrest is and what the footrest is. So let's have a look here. Now, if, if the way it's called, the reason it's called the cyclohexane chair is because this is kind of like the parallelogram part. It's kind of like the flat part of your chair. Uh, and each of the flaps represents um, the headrest in this case and the footrest here. So the next thing to do once you've drawn in the headrest and the footrest is to start putting in the axial uh, substituents. Now you could start with equatorial, but I'd strongly advise starting with axial. You find that axial is much easier to put in first. The reason why axial is easier to put in first is because basically just drawing a line. All right, a line, a vertical line going straight up, straight down. So you want to find your footrest and draw an axial line going straight down. And then you find your headrest and you also have a line going straight up. The thing about the cyclohexane chair is that your groups are going to alternate going straight up, straight down. So if we have a straight up group on our, on our headrest, the group next door is going to actually be straight down. And then this is going to be up, this is down already, we've drawn that in the footrest. This is up and this is down. Alright, so now we've drawn in all of, our, all of our axial groups. The next thing to do is to draw on the equatorial. And the reason why it's best to draw the equatorial in second is because if you draw it in first, it's really easy to draw it off to one side, maybe not quite right like that. You want to draw your equatorial groups so that your carbon looks tetrahedral, because that's, of course, what the bond angles in an sp3 hybridized carbon are. They're 109 degrees um, tetrahedral. So what I would do is take your axial group, if your axial group's pointing down, you want your equatorial group to be pointing a little bit up, so somewhat up. And as you go along the ring, if your axial group's pointing up, you want to put your equatorial pointing somewhat down. And now it's somewhat up, somewhat down, somewhat up, somewhat down. And lo and behold, we've actually drawn all the groups uh, that are a part of our cyclohexane chair. Now what I really like about the parallelogram technique is that it's since you know how to draw a parallelogram, uh, if you want to draw the mirror image of the chair, so the chair flip, what you're going to start with, okay, is the mirror image of that parallelogram. So there's nothing mysterious about it. So let's let's construct the the flipped chair of the chair that we just drew, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the uh, draw in the flipped parallelogram like so. All right? Now, just like we did before, we're going to draw a flap, so a triangle pointing straight up or not straight up, a little bit off to the one side, and we're also going to draw another flap pointing uh, off to the bottom. And again, we have these nice concave angles here uh, that kind of help us guide the way. And again, our parallelogram is going to be the core of our chair, uh, and the flaps are going to represent, one of them is going to be the footrest, and one of them is going to be the headrest. And uh, so I'm going to draw, I'm going to erase these little guidelines here. So you can see, just like our footrest was over here, our, 
our new footrest over here is over there. All right. Just like we did last time, we're going to take our footrest and we're going to draw in uh, the axial groups. So the footrest is going to have an axial group pointing straight down. The headrest is going to have an axial group pointing straight up. And then we're going to alternate up, down, up, down. This is down, uh, up, and down. And just like we did last time, we are now going to put in our equatorial. And if our if our axial is pointing down, our equatorial is going to point somewhat up, like that. And axial here is pointing straight up, so equatorial is going to point somewhat down, somewhat up, somewhat down, somewhat up, somewhat down. And uh, before you know it, you've actually drawn the mirror image of the chair. So. That's how to draw a cyclohexane chair uh, in the, the cyclohexane chair conformation, including all the axial and the equatorial substituents. Um, and uh, I, you use it using the parallelogram technique, which makes sort of drawing the core of the, of the uh, cyclohexane chair, I think, a lot easier. So in a subsequent video, what we can do is actually show how to use the cyclohexane chair conformation to show flipping of a chair uh, from one form to the other and what that actually does to all of our different substituents. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this is useful.